Greetings, test subjects. I'm sub-iterator aggregating Richter Sentinel, otherwise known as ARS, but y'all can just call me Rick. I will be the sub-iterator overseeing this episode of the Lizard Game Saga, where we will be observing the military might of the Green Lizards. As is per usual, there will be four pre-selected test subjects. First on the roster for this cycle is Test Subject 1915. Personally, I feel a certain kinship with this particular green lizard. If I were a green lizard, I reckon my stats would line right up with this one. And just look at the scale formation on that tail. Must be mighty helpful with camouflaging against the underbrush while hunting prey. Next, we have Test Subject 5388. This specimen is a little on the lackluster side of the spectrum of awesomeness, but I've seen worse. The only mildly redeeming feature about this test subject is its unique spines running along its back, all the way to the tip of its tail. The third test subject is a rare mint green individual that goes by the ID 1928. This test subject has, uh, moderate stats. Not bad, but not good either. It also has quite a big noggin. Not sure what that's all about. But who knows, maybe it uses that gargantuan dome to charge headlong into its enemies. Last but not least, we have Test Subject 1611. This specimen has pretty good stats all around. It's only lacking in aggression, but that shouldn't be too much of a problem. This fella has some interesting physical characteristics, such as the pair of false antenna and odd arrangement of scales on the tail. Anyway, enough looking over the test subjects. Let's get to some real action. Now, I'm not the kind of iterator who's content to while away the cycles with repeat testing. So, unlike in the previous episode, I'm gonna cut straight to the part where we watch the test subjects fight. Green lizards might not be the most complex or unique amongst the various lizard species, but it is that very simplicity which makes the green lizard such an effective predator. They are also highly territorial and will engage in brutal single combat with their rivals. Though, these big lizards do their best to conserve their energy as much as possible, and oftentimes will only begin fighting over territory if it is confirmed that food is available, which is why I add in such incentive to trigger their instincts. See here how the lizard's spines rattle with their seething aggression. Green lizards are always eager to get up in each other's faces, snapping their jaws and brawling until one either backs down or is killed. That settles that. 
We have our victor for this round. I'm not all that surprised by the outcome. Considering Subject 5388's abysmal stats, I would have been surprised if it didn't lose to Subject 1915. For this next round, I'll refresh Test Subject 1915 and have it fight against Test Subject 1611. This matchup should prove to be much more interesting. Each opponent's stats are on the higher end, and as a result, the specimens are much more eager to fight one another without needing the presence of food as an incentive. Damn, that fight ended quickly. That grasshopping maniac must have gotten a lucky hit on the opponent at some point. That just goes to show that a test subject's level of aggression isn't everything when it comes to winning fights. All right, here's the final matchup for test subject 1915. This time fighting against our big-headed test subject, 1928. Already, it seems like Subject 1928 is using their enormous jaws to their advantage, pushing their opponent across the arena with little effort. Oh, what's this? The test subjects appear to have ceased combat, and while I respect the concept of mutual respect between fighters, this simply will not do in this experiment. I must remind the test subjects that sustenance is only a reward for those who are willing to fight, and fight they shall! Once again, Test Subject 1915 is defeated. You could argue that because Subject 1928 managed to secure some biomass by catching the yeek, that this gave them an unfair boost. However, there is no concrete evidence that bringing food successfully into a den gives anything other than ensuring the creature's survival during hibernation. Now, let's have a free-for-all brawl. Every test subject for themselves. I'll admit it, this ain't exactly part of the test, but I'm curious to see who remains standing at the end of this battle. A mosh pit full of green lizards is a sight to behold. Bodies go flying, jaws lock, combatants performing feats of acrobatics completely at odds with their cumbersome nature.
Looks like Subject 1611 is the first to fall in this fight. It's a bit difficult to discern what blow done him in, but I suspect right here was when they choked. Seems like Test Subject 5388 is looking to get some revenge for their defeat against Test Subject 1915. And Test Subject 1928 is fine with letting the pair duke it out amongst themselves. Suddenly, Test Subject 5388 turns on the peanut gallery. Seems like they're not the kind to appreciate an audience. Test Subject 1915 is terribly injured at this point and doesn't last long. Test subjects decide on a truce. Test subject 5388 is critically injured, but unwilling to retreat into a den. You can see how badly injured they are based on the stuttering of their bioluminescence. That there is the lizard's internal workings bugging out, causing erratic muscle spasms and the occasional loss of consciousness. Now, while the remaining test subjects have ceased combat, the same rules still apply as before. There will be no peace treaties tolerated during this test. So, after removing the bodies, let's add another yeek to reignite their fighting spirit. Once again, Test Subject 1928 catches the yeek. That massive cranium of theirs must make capturing prey a piece of cake. The resulting final battle is a little anticlimactic, but I think it's clear as to who the winner is now. I can tell, based on the fact that if I manually drag the wounded test subject into the den, they do not re-emerge, while subject 1928 pops right back out. And so ends this segment of the experiment. Normally, the episode would end right about now, but then I got an idea. Why not send the test subjects out on a field expedition? But not just any field expedition. A field expedition that'll give us a unique opportunity to observe the green lizards in a place they normally wouldn't occupy. One of the rarely utilized abilities of the green lizards is their fast swim speed. That's right, these tanky lizards can travel across the surface of water at great acceleration. However, this speed comes with a steep downside in that green lizards are incredibly buoyant and are incapable of diving beneath the surface of the water to pursue aquatic prey. Which is why green lizards often do not thrive in environments with deep bodies of water. In fact, the common jetfish will eagerly bully and tease a green lizard, just for the heck of it. Of course, none of this will deter green lizards from stubbornly fighting one another over their perceived territory. 
despite their water combat being wholly inadequate for a proper rivalry skirmish. They'll still attempt to bite and shove each other to establish dominance. Test subject 5388 inadvertently shoves subject 1915 under the water, allowing them to flee and, oh, what's this? Now this is unprecedented behavior. Green lizards are normally incapable of climbing poles. Their heavy bodies make the task of hauling themselves up nearly impossible. Yet here we see test subject 1915 doggedly attempting to ascend these poles again and again. In fact, they spend quite a long time doing this, and there are a few times where I genuinely think the test subject might actually succeed. That was the highest they managed to climb yet! I add in another of the test subjects, and immediately they are assaulted by blue leeches, a common waterborne parasite that feeds off of any creature that it can get its horrible sucker mouths on. Of course, this doesn't stop the test subjects from fighting. Such is their nature. Finally, the last test subject is added in, and it only takes a few seconds before they too are beelining over to the other test subjects. Whoa there! The buggers nearly made it! Well, that's a shame. Eventually, Subject 1928 succumbs to the veracity of the blue leeches, the parasites having sapped away all of the lizard's energy until it drowns. And now, it's only Test Subject 1915 and Test Subject 1611 left to fight. Oh wait, never mind. It appears one of them already bit the dust. Uh, what is it Rick, now? are you there? Aggregating Richter Sentinel. What do you think you're doing, mate? Testing the test subjects. What does it look like I'm doing? You do realize we aren't supposed to allow the test subjects outside of the chosen test chamber? What if they escape? Are you really that worried about green lizards escaping containment? I get the feeling that you're just here because you want to take a crack at the lizard games experiment. Well, yeah, obviously. I don't get why you and Intelligible Factors got to go first, seeing as how neither as you were doing it right. Whoa there! Are you questioning my methods? Oh no, of course not. I totally respect your choice in disregarding the entire structure of the experiments and going off to do your own thing. It's very sciencey and totally going to assist us in our plans to launch Don't the- Don't you mock me, you insubordinate reprobate. I don't need the likes of you telling me how to perform my function. <laughs> Oh look, now you've gone and upset Spoons. Me? I wasn't the one who- Both of you must cease your egotistical posturing. None of this is constructive. It doesn't matter how the tests are done, we just need to each fill up the main buffer with enough intellectual material to keep the prime iterator occupied while we finish the final preparations for the launch. 